Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay Moore. This is Greg Cruz. This is Dan. This Stone. is Dexter from the this Offspring. Is Nathan East. This is Sebastian Younger. This is David Lab. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mitchell. I'm Krista This is Dr. Bob Greenberg. I'm Laird Hamilton. This is- Hi, this is Sean Worthington with CloudCoin.Global, and this is the Break It Down Show. And now, the Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Hey, Sean. So this is cool. One of the things that we love to do here at the Break It Down Show is, is gather perspectives. From any, life is a mosaic, so you're one of the tiles in our thing. And I'm into the crypto world. Uh, Kat Connor, one of the members of our audience, she's out in New Zealand. She's writing a, uh, a crime novel called Crypto Byte. She's got like 11 different novels she's written, and they all have the byte number behind it, or byte name behind it. And so uh, we were talking about crypto yesterday. So this is... This is exciting because you're way out and far in front of a lot of people, and we're going to talk about your your crypto thoughts and product uh, in the very, very near future. But I wanted to point out a couple of interesting things. So uh, we are both alums of Chico. I did not graduate from Chico, but I went there for a while. I also am an alum of I didn't graduate there from either. From yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> I did go there for four years. Yeah, well, I did one year, and I'm like, this does not suit me, so I left. But we followed that path around the same time. I mean, I was a couple of years before that, but you know, whatever. Very, very similar. Uh, I also have a master's degree from University of Phoenix, and uh, my my last major girlfriend of my life had uh, a couple of degrees from Nova Southeastern. So uh, I'm wow. very, very familiar with all of those things, and and I dig that you're here now. You're an instructor of computer science at Butte, and and those are very exciting things but what we really want to talk to you about is is cloud coin consortium the cloud coin concept and so let's just do this let's put a little bit of work in talking about crypto and what we've learned about money and kind of you know look we've got We've got wealth of nations, right? Adam Smith wrote 300 plus years ago now, I guess it is. A long time ago, he wrote about money and the invisible hand and things balancing out. And we know so much more now about how things work and the power of of bytes and information in terms of exchanging value for value. And I think the crypto world does that better than what simply just exchanging money can do. So talk a little bit about what we know about money and, and then we'll go from there into the, uh, into the Bitcoin and all the other coins that are out there to talk about. Yeah. You know, I was two years ago, I was sitting in the bath thinking about what is money? Why is it that some people with Nobel prizes in economics are saying that Bitcoin isn't money? Why are some people saying that gold is money and nothing else is money? Why is the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Bernie, back then it was Bernie, uh, uh, Bernanke, uh, Bernanke said that gold was not money. And so what is the essence of money? What makes money money? What is, I, I was studying it and I looked at this island of Yap and the island of Yap is an interesting island. It was one of the last islands in the Pacific that was discovered by Europeans. And when the European sailors got there, they were very surprised because when they went to the village center, there was this big, let's call it a bank. It was a bunch of raised platforms. And every family had one of these raised platforms. And they had these big stone coins, these big round stone money with a hole in the center. And every time there was a transaction, they would roll the money from one platform to another And this created a monetary system. And I realized that this system that they had here is nothing more than a public ledger. It's a physical representation of a database. And instead of having, you know, uh, written on a hard drive, like a table with everybody's account numbers and how much money they have, they have these physical platforms that represents the row and the table. And instead of having data in it, the stone coins are, you know, represent numerical values. And they're able to stop people from uh, making, you know, double spending and and doing bad transactions because if somebody was to sneak out in the middle of the night and roll one of these big giant coins from one platform to another, everybody would see it. Everybody would know it. And so I realized that this system is basically what Bitcoin is. And then I realized that monetary systems are, in fact, information systems and they're databases and they track how much value that we create for our for the economy for civilization and they're designed to make sure that we get the same value out if not more and 
without this kind of a system, our entire civilization would fall apart. In fact, we rely on it to make decisions. When we get up in the morning, we want to know what kind of work to do. Well, we make that decision based on money. You know, if we're going to get paid a hundred thousand at one job, we'll do that instead of the job that pays only twenty thousand. And when we go to the store and we buy some eggs, if we've got two cartons of eggs that are identical, but one is 10 cents cheaper than the other, we'll buy the cheaper one. And so money helps us to make decisions that help us to economize. We all need to economize. And then, uh, you know, I actually teach database design and I realized that these, that money is in fact data and that what we could do is we can take all the rules that we apply to databases and we can simply apply them to monetary systems. And so I was, you know, just asking the question, what is money? But it turned out that I, I actually started on the journey of creating my own currency because we could start with the physical idea of what is perfect money. We could have a model of what is perfect money. A model of perfect money. Let's talk a little bit. You know, actually, let's back up a little bit and let's talk a little bit more about distributed ledger. There's a lot of folks that see the flaws of the system because they don't know it. I got hip to Amazon really early on in the mid nineties. And I'm like, this is a different way. And as a guy that was gone a lot, being able to go to the internet to buy a book, that, that was a huge thing. And I could see the value in that. And then the company kept buying other companies and became a, you know, a marketplace for things. And, and I got it and bought some stock really early on. But this seems like a similar thing where we can create efficiencies. We have an existing system where let's just pick a big bank chase. Right now, Chase makes billions of dollars on processing the money. Like if there was someone in the, in the middle of that system on the Isle of Yap taking one extra token out each time a token rolled from platform to platform, at some point you're going to say, what value are you bringing? Like we, you know, <laughs> we don't need you here. And this has been like the entrepreneurial disruption world is how do you take an old system, you know, going to a, 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 a a photo mat or a, a photo fox kiosk and waiting two weeks to get you know one roll of film for thirty bucks developed or or now you know who even develops film anymore except for professionals at the highest end so this seems like the next thing is is with crypto we've got the ability to validate the transactions as they come through it's computer based so it's not you can hack, I guess, a system potentially, and I'm I'm just doing this for the audience's sake. You can hack, let's say it takes seven computers to make a decision, and you can hack one of them, but you can't hack each individual computer. So the, the computers are going to make a common decision that, that allows for that transaction to happen. You're saying that in the Bitcoin world, there's a lot of energy and resource in pro and time, which is a resource, to process a transaction and you're saying that that's not necessary so when okay so let's use practical examples when i am trying to understand i'm you know like hey i'm curious i'm excited but i'm terrified like is this is it let me ask you the simple question is cryptocurrency is bitcoin going to disappear in the next five years will will there be no cryptocurrencies at all uh, i don't know if it's gonna be five years but i would say in the next 10 years yes because I have invented something that is so much more efficient that it's going to blow it away. Okay. So it's just a matter of time before that technology gets, gets dominated. That's why we don't see the, we're not using the island of Yap money. Right. It's because it's inefficient. And that's the same reason why we're not going to see Bitcoin in the future is because it too is inefficient. The only thing is, is it's the only thing that people know about and it is better than the banking system. Well, okay. Yeah. So, so Bitcoin is better than the banking system. So let me ask you this in say, 30 years, in 10 years, will Chase Bank and their ilk be significantly different in how they run their operation? Will they be able to adapt in time? I mean, they have all the advantage because they have all the money and, and everything flows through them. But does the crypto world seems to be like it's it's going to change how business is done? What is someone like Chase or Bank of America or Citibank, what do those guys look like in 10, 15 years? They're going to be gone. They're not going to, we're not going to need any parking lots. We're not going to need any ATMs. We're not going to need any tellers. We're not going to need any checking or, you know, savings accounts in those banks because we're going to be able to do that all digitally. And if they don't switch over to digital services really quick, they're going to go the way of the buggy whip. They're just going to be completely 
outdated. There's some services that we're going to need in the future. We're still going to need people to take our savings and invest it wisely. And that's something that they might be able to get into. They might be able to get into making loans to people. I might be able to, you know, give the bank some money. They make loans to people and then I get some interest on that. There might be a lot of different things that they can do. But one of the things that the banks do right now is they're able to hack our current information system, which is the Federal Reserve notes. Basically, the federal government has made a deal with the banking system that federal government will allow the banks to print up money. In exchange for that, the federal government gets to borrow all the money that it wants. Yeah. And this is, in fact, a hack. These, uh, they're hacking you and me, and they're siphoning value from our society. And that's going to stop once we all switch to a currency in which they cannot control. Yeah. No, you're, you're right about that. I mean, that's the whole thing. About, that's one of the things I see is the efficiency. And it's not to topple giants. It's just an efficiency. It's I don't need to pay $2.50 to use an ATM that's outside of my network. Come on. You're not profiteering off of that? You know, come on. This is ridiculous. So, okay, we have the ability with crypto to to sort of knock out a lot of the middlemen and the middlemen build banks and insurance companies, that kind of thing. One of the things that seems like that's going to happen is the value of information will go up, or at least the ability to exchange that value is going to go up. Uh, Wikipedia's competitor called Everpedia is taking their their encyclopedia, their wiki encyclopedia onto the blockchain. They're actually going to do an airdrop of their token here in the next few days. Today actually is the last day to lock in EOS to get the airdrop. And what they're saying is, is we're going to incent people to exchange their knowledge into our wiki universe and give back, you know, these coins and also to ensure that the reliability is there. There's also the crypto end of it where, you can't just write, you know, Sean Worthington has blue hair. You know, I guess just that won't work within the system that they're creating. So a lot of different things are happening. Let me, let me get back to the real world. So Citibank and lending, uh, as, as Citibank is trying to figure out how to make money and their lending practices become more exclusive, uh, fractional owning will be a thing. So it seems like we'll have what I would call peer-to-peer financing where you say, I would like to buy this house and you could in effect have people on the, on the blockchain buy tokens to invest in your ability to buy a house and you could exchange value that way. Kind of, again, removing the onerous, we typically say, no, we want 10% of the money up front, all the other things. You wouldn't have to necessarily do that. Am I far off base with that? No, you're absolutely right. Because part of this revolution that we're starting to have is that not only can the blockchain and of course we have the with cloudcoin we have a technology called rata which we think is much superior but these technologies allow us to not only issue digital currencies but to issue other digital assets including stocks and bonds and so this you know we see that the great majority of the uh, blockchain stuff out there now is actually stocks yeah. And uh, they call them tokens, but they're not being used as money. They're actually being used as ownership. And uh, we'll continue to see that. We'll see new organizations sprout up. So this is the, what, what are some of the things that I can see. Number one, like you said, having ownership in a house or just you know some fractional ownership of something very small that we normally wouldn't associate with that. I could see you having ownership of a celebrity's career in which – a, a celebrity sells their own stock and has their like a, a board that manages the, is them. Sure, I could see uh, you know, special you know rock groups things like that, but I could also see marriages. I could see new types of relationships in which there's new kind of contracts for in which you might not just have uh, a man and a wife. You might have a hundred men and a hundred women in this relationship. Right, <laughs> and so we might you know see some very radical things, not to mention stock markets in which they're pri- privately transacted without government knowing who's doing what and when, and bonds and, and, and everything else. And it's be, gonna be global. And so it's gonna allow people to do business 
with everybody else in the world. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, you know, you're making a great point. It had never occurred to me, but it makes absolute sense. And I don't know what this looks like, so I'm just going to pull out my paintbrush and paint pretty big. But a marriage contract is a terrible business contract, you know, and, and we only have so many ways to exchange value. So uh, let's, in terms of this conversation, let's just talk about dollars, right? Like I can take assets in terms of like hard assets, cars, uh, a stock portfolio, a house, the vacation, like those are hard assets that we can all agree equal somewhere near $5 million in terms of a divorce, right? But you go on the other side where you have like, say, the stay-at-home mom who's traded 25 years of productivity to raise the four kids, and how, how do you put a value on that? Like there's not an easy way to say what that equals dollar and cents wise. And so what we're saying is in the crypto world, we can have more means of communicating value, whether it's location or knowledge or, or an actual like, a, you know, this is money you can use and trade or the ability to say the ability to create a transaction to to be CD bank in between two things. You can you can better define the value created rather than just saying give us two dollars and we become part of the system so it's like give me five dollars you know it's uh, the ability to define and exchange value is is much more specific i think and this is me i don't have the big degree you do but uh well, it feels like it's it's more specific and there's more options to more accurately define what's valuable and there's something you know there's even a bigger issue and that is that one of the reasons why we have government or, you know, the justified government is so that we can or the government will enforce contracts. And the government has stopped enforcing marriage contracts 100 percent. They just gave up on it. Right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if, if they can't do their job, then maybe there's some other tool such as uh, cryptocurrencies or uh, what we're doing, cloud based currencies or cloud based tokens that are going to step in and actually do that work. I want to get into your uh, crypto, your cloud-based cryptocurrency idea here in a second. I just want to do a little more background work just to kind of give the audience an idea of, of, of how we're going to play in this space. So in the crypto world, there are a lot of coins. Bitcoin is the obvious one. It's kind of the Kleenex of coins where you just say Bitcoin and everybody knows what you're talking about. But there are coins that literally cover a hundred different things. I mean, there's all kinds of coins I invest. I've got 25 different coins, Sean, in my portfolio. And that's not, I mean, to brag it's the means to say i have no idea what's going to hit so i'm going to get nice and wide if i can buy a thousand of those coins i'm going to if i'm going to buy i can only afford two of those i'm going to buy two of those so i've, I've kind of done an array where some of them are, are coins that provide a service some of them are, are coins that equate to a cash value others are are eos and i'll be investing in the everpedia uh, coin system so um there's a lot of areas where the cryptocurrency, the blockchain idea is coming in. Pretty much any industry, anything, there's a uh, there's a Reddit that's on the on the blockchain. There's going to be, if there's not already, a Facebook that's going to be on the blockchain. And all these different things are going to move over to this side where you have this different uh, idea on proof and work and sharing the different things. So let's get into your cloud idea so what, are, what well, we could if you like to we yeah. could talk a little bit about the current state of the crypto and the fact is is that there was one invention it was called the blockchain and it was done by satoshi namagoto who we don't know you know who he is but that code was open source everybody could take it and copy it and paste it and so a lot of folks that aren't computer scientists but are in fact marketers got a hold of that code with a little bit of help from some programmers, we were able to change the name, market it, sell it for different things. And so we have seen a lot of coins. In fact, there's 1,500 of them out there. And uh, if you go and look at all of their different APIs or how they talk to other things, you'll see that about, out of 700, 694 of them actually use the exact same API. They're the exact same thing. What, what's an API? And, so an API is an application programming interface, and it basically allows you to talk to something. And when something is exactly the same, you're going to use the exact same API, if you, especially if you copy and paste it. Okay. And so these APIs, well, they're the same. Uh, there, there are a few currencies that are unique. For example, 
Ethereum is unique. Steemit is unique. Uh, BitShares is unique. I own all but, three of those things. Well, they are, you know, they they are unique. Whenever you have something unique, it tends to dominate if it's if it's better. Right. Because you know, if you wanted to uh, take something and change it, if you change it wrong, for example, BitGold. I don't know if you heard of BitGold. Sure. But, but that's, you know, I, I think that's just bit shares and they tried to make some improvements to make it go fast. I'm not, not bit shares. So that's Bitcoin, and they copied it and tried to make some improvements. And actually they entered in some problems that may have made it more vulnerable. So they had some you know, double spending issues. This has to do with the problem of what's called, uh, can, uh, um, the problem is consensus. Okay. And consensus, you hear this all the time, like it's a good thing. But the consensus is not truth. Just because you have 99, peop- 99 out of 100 people that believe something, that doesn't make something right or true. If you are able to take over or add a bunch of servers into a crypto economy, you can actually take over the money. And that's what happened with BitGold. That, that kind of stuff uh, can happen with by changing the code. They might actually change it worse, so it actually doesn't work. I got you. But we know, we know that... Bitcoin works. It's slow. It's not scalable. The more people that use it, the slower it gets. But it does fulfill its function. But it does have some major flaws. It is not quantum safe. And we've got quantum computers. They can hack it in a couple minutes. Yeah. We have uh, the consensus issue, which is Chinese government can just put on 10,000 servers and take over if they wanted to. Right. And there's also, of course, the scalability issue. The more people that use it, it's just slow. It's so slow. It takes 20 hours to do a transaction. That's unusable. So and the yeah. electricity. Use. Oh and yeah, the, the electricity. Fact that it's, it uses a huge amount of electricity in order to do this mining stuff, which is nonsense, in my opinion, because it's just guessing numbers. I mean, I understand why they're doing it, but uh, it's a wrong. It's, it's based on a wrong thinking. Okay, so um, let's not even worry about mining. We can get into that in another episode when you come back. But let's let's talk a little bit about. Okay, so you see these flaws with Bitcoin, and the API. The more crowded it gets, the harder it is. The consumption of electricity or whatever, some kind of power source to make it work. What um, what did you come up with? Like, how what was your answer to deal with that then? I mean, as as Bitcoin grows, it is going to get bigger. Something has to change, right? When how they do it, because uh, it's been as high as eighteen thousand dollars a coin. It's not there. It's at seven thousand something right now. But um, that you know, when it's at eighteen, it almost becomes you have to sell it off because it is hard to get your stuff out of there. If there's a panic and you're waiting twenty hours, the panic could be over, you know. So what did you come up with? Well, we started with a philosophy and sort of a normative philosophy about what money should be. Okay. And what money should be is it should be data. Money is data, and there's basically two things that you want data to be. You want it to have physical integrity, and you want to have it logical integrity and physical integrity means that uh, number one nobody can just go turn off the computer for example we had something called e-gold in california and everybody took their gold and they put it in a vault and they issued digital certificates against it and then a thief busted down the door took the vault stole everything oh man and that was uh, unfortunately that was the state of california so they couldn't do anything about it and (laughs) that was the thief yeah and uh so that system was a great system. They did billions of dollars worth of trade, but it had no physical integrity. Boy. The government could just shut it down. The blockchain has solved that problem by creating a database in which is distributed over so many people that you can write transactions to it and you can read the transactions, but you cannot go and delete them or change them because everybody's going to know about it. You're not going to accept that. And so that they solved that problem and so the counterfeitability, but the but the problem is, is they also have this mining, and mining, believe it or not, is a form of counterfeiting. If we have a information system in which its job is to track who's creating value and who's screwing up value, we want the system administrators to get paid, and that's basically what the miners are. They're administrators that are administering the computers, but we don't want them to just create freaking uh, counterfeit money and, and, and add it to the system. Yeah. That's not what we want them to do. But another thing is loss. We don't want people to lose money either. Mm. And 6% of the, I'm mean, not 6%, uh, 4 million, over 4 million of the Bitcoins that have been mined have actually been lost permanently. 
there's no getting them back. Right. And if you lose more bitcoins than you make, you're not <laughs> going to have a monetary system after a while. <laughs> so that's yeah. you know that's so that, that's something you don't want. And we're also then we get into logical things, and that has to do with who's the owner of it. We want to make sure everybody knows who the owner. Not not everybody knows, but that the noter, no owner can prove that they're the owner when it comes time to make a transaction. Yeah. And we want no law, uh, no theft. We don't want to have any money stolen. We don't want any money taxed in case unless we want to take that money and actually give it to the government. We don't want to have anybody be able to just come and take it out of there. And there's you know to be scalable so that everybody in the whole world can use it at the same time. We want it to be available day, night, any mm-hmm. second, and we want the transactions to happen in less time that we can think about it. So that by the time the transactions happened, you know we're not sitting there waiting because it's happened quicker than you know the waiting time. We want it to be also we want it to be 100% private. Yeah, and that means that we do not want to have to log in. We don't want to sign up. We don't want to have to have a password to use our money. And we don't want to uh, have those transactions tracked in a public ledger where everybody can see them. The reason why we want privacy is because every time that we go to buy something, if the whole world knew about it, we would make different decisions. Yeah. And True. that would actually affect our economy by reducing our uh, efficiency. I mean, imagine that I went to buy something at Walmart and my wife found out about it and said, Hey, you've got to go to Rayleigh's or something. That's a good store. Right. And my, she doesn't care about money. Yeah. So let me, boy, this stuff is, is, uh, it's, it's confusing and hard to find a way to explain it. So let's just slow down for a second again here too. So you found these, you found these flaws with the system and you've built, you've built a less demanding, more efficient way of doing it. It's more secure. It's faster. It, um, it's just more nimble. It's more efficient. So what, apart from Bitcoin, what other coins are in jeopardy because you've built a better machine then? I mean, it's not all of them because some of them work on like EOS coins and those ones I'm assuming do something different. Like what, what is, what is your coin going to replace that already exists right now? I mean, since there are like a zillion coins, like 1500 something coins out there. So our coin does everything better than every other coin. <laughs> I love so, it. So, for example, if you were to say, hey, look, here's Monero. That's the privacy coin. Mm-hmm. Do you have to have an account? Do you have to log into it? Do you have to uh, – does it track the transactions that happen? No, we're, we're more private than that. So we win in that category. Okay, what about speed? Uh, not only do we, are we faster than any kind of crypt, uh, blockchain technology, but we're also faster – than Visa or any other conventional type of uh, monetary system. That's fast. <laughs> That's fast. <clears throat> so what is it? What's the hurdle then to if I want to walk into I don't know Thrifty and buy some ice cream or Rayleigh's? I want to go to Rayleigh's and I want to buy some vegan cheese. What am I going to do once? Do I even go to a counter anymore? Or do I just grab the cheese and tap my phone to it and it's paid for or something? Well. Uh, one of the things that makes cloud coin so powerful is that we separate the data from the logic completely. Okay. Where if you want to get into blockchain, you have to download this thing called a wallet, but it's actually not a wallet. It's the blockchain. Right. And it's, and it's 165 gigabytes and it encrypts and decrypts stuff and you can run a full node and become a miner. So it's, it's the logic and the data is completely tied together and you have to have that decryption key in order to get at it. And so we have the, the files or, you know, the, the money is in files. There's the, the, the data in the files and we just have to check them when we transact to make sure that they are uh, authentic. And okay. so the authentic system is separate from the money. Right. And so if you were to go, so it, so basically anything that you can think of, we can do. Okay. Because, because something like Ethereum or something like EOS, and by the way, EOS is not done yet. They mm-hmm. just are raising money to actually make the system. Yeah. And so we, uh, you know, we plan to work with EOS. We plan to have CloudCoin actually be inside of EOS. And that's going to be something that, <laughs> you know, no other currency is going to be able to do. We can actually put cloud coins inside of EOS. Wait. Okay. So hold on. That's interesting. So, Okay, so EOS is built off of like the Ethereum 
principles, basically. It's not. It's not Ethereum a. Ethereum on steroids. Yeah. Right. It's not like a progeny of Ethereum, but it's it's kind of is in terms of our conversation at the layman level. Uh, Ethereum begat EOS. And you're going to, are you also going to be inside of Ethereum then at some point too, to improve how they do things? Well, you know, if you have the island of Yap and you got stone money, mm -hmm. and you're rolling around, you can think of Ethereum as being uh, the island of Yap money, except you've got robots that move stuff around and they'll do some things automatically. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and we could actually put cloud coins, which are data, we could write it on, you know, USB drives. We could put it inside of that yeah. imaginary system, you know. So right now I'm on my Binance account and I want to buy a cloud coin. What what token symbol do I put it, or is it not available on the exchanges yet? So cloud coin uses such a radically different technology that the uh, exchanges have been slow to take us. But of course we have announced with Stan Larimer that we are going to be on BitShares and we're working on we got programmers working on that full time, and we have scheduled that it would be no less than two weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, two months. But hopefully just a couple of weeks because uh, it's, it should be very easy to do. But uh, there, we are not, not on exchanges, but you'd want to get on BitShares to get it. Okay. And when you say get on BitShares, right now I'm looking at BTS, the uh, the BitShare uh, logo, the icon, the, the name. So I don't need to buy that. I need to go to bit, the BitShare website where you can buy different I mean, kinds of If you of wanted coins. to buy Cloudcoin, you just... This episode of the Break It Down Show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate, and develop podcasts just like this one, consult others to build their own, and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business, or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at Day Turner or at John LG 69 at the Break It Down Show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. Type, you know, Google buy cloud coin. You'd find some website that would take your American check or you could use a PayPal or you could use a credit card. Yeah. Or you could, uh, I mean, there's people all over the world that are selling cloud coins right now. You don't have to log in. You don't have to download a wallet to get it. You can get it fairly easy. So, I mean, but if you wanted to buy it, get buy it on an, an exchange, well, that is just coming right now. And that's going to be on the BitShares exchange. And by exchanging it on an exchange, is that defeating the purpose of like the, the private part of it then? Or, and I'm asking because I really don't know because I'm, I'm trying to understand that part of it. Like, do I not want to have it on an exchange if I, if I can avoid it? That's right. We're trying to build a peer-to-peer -peer exchange right now, and we've made great strides in that. And that's because when you put it on an exchange that's run by the government or is regulated by a government, yeah. that government basically controls your ass. Yeah. And they can come in and they can see every – I mean, the, uh, the IRS can come and demand that you fork over all of your records and who's getting what and everything. And so – no, once you join the domain, uh, once you join a, an exchange, you're going to give up some of your privacy, and it is going to defeat a lot of the purpose. But the thing, but the thing about that is, is that um, you can, uh, you know, it is a way for us to discover the price. Right. And, and so a problem that we have right now is that man, there you have you better shop around for Cloudcoin because there's so many different people selling at different prices. I got you. That that. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, it does provide a convenient way for you as an investor to exchange different things and, and make your investments. All right. So if, if we haven't covered this already, I want to make sure everybody has an understanding of what we're doing here. I'm talking to Sean Worthington. He has created something called the Cloud Coin. It's, uh, you can find out more about it on Twitter at Cloud Coin Global. And you can also find out about it on their website which is www.cloudcoin.global, cloudcoin.global. And you can find out all about the infrastructure and the future of money and all of these things from the brilliant mind of Sean Worthington. Now, you've written a book as well, right? Yeah, I wrote a book called Beyond Bitcoin, The Future of Digital Currency. And in there I lay out the promise of digital currency and what money is and the problems with Bitcoin and some of the big philosophical issues to deal with when, when talking about digital currencies. Let me ask you this. So 
when I was first getting, like, I was interested, and I'm like, I'm going to do something about this. And, and I'm not a man of means, so I have very small means. So I, I invest fractionally within my fractional amount of money. And so the guy that I know that I have a lot of respect for his knowledge of the uh, of the crypto world said, diversify, buy what you can walk away from and never never expect to get a return from, but just get wide and, and go and go that way. I know as a businessman, you want people to buy CloudCoin, and I am going to buy some. But should we should we still continue to diversify, or what are your thoughts on how does someone? I mean, look, so many people are like I don't understand. I don't want to get tricked. There's people trying to, you know, one of the problems of the blockchain is there's always someone knocking on the door, your vault, trying to pull your money out, and you you know, like they can get it out easier than you sometimes if you don't make the right steps. That terrifies us folks on the uh, we're not that smart at this whole crypto thing yet. So what's Absolutely. what's smart? Keep in mind that I've been a college instructor for the past 18 years. I have never even invested in anything. So I don't know anything about investments. <laughs> and when I, in fact, when I started CloudCoin, we didn't have an ICO because I didn't even know what an ICO was or heard about it. Right. And so I never looked at money as being an investment. I looked at money as being a way of buying and selling things, exchanging stuff. And the fact that so many people have made so much money on these currencies, well, it's, it surprises me. <laughs> At least it, it did in the past. Now I can see the value that's come out of it. And I see that it really is quite a big value. And, you know, just being able to buy things all over the world day or night without any bank fees or taxes or tariffs, it really does give us a great degree of freedom. And it allows us to keep our money and we don't have to worry about government inflation. So the currencies are, in fact, very valuable. Some are more valuable than others. Right. And I think that I've created a model about how to look at them and how to judge them. And in my book, I actually have a little table that uh, compares gold with Federal Reserve notes, with Bitcoin and with CloudCoin, the different ways that we might judge which money is better. I think that there's that we're all doing experiments right now this is all a bunch of experiments and i was working on my dissertation in computer information systems and i said no, not instead of doing this i'm just going to do an experiment with this cloud coin i'm going to set up this thing i'm going to make it work i was thinking that i'd write a paper and turn it in and i said let's just do it let's uh, see what happens and so cloud coin is an experiment bitcoin was an experiment they were, they're all based on the technologies of the past but we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if the thing's going to completely fail or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't know, you know, sooner or later, we're going to start bumping up against the governments yeah. because the governments, they're not going to be able to control us anymore if we're, if they don't know what we're buying and selling. Well, and, and not to be Mr. Uh, you know, conspiracy theory guy, but when you don't need them, you don't pay them for whatever portion of the transaction. I mean, we have custom houses because custom houses bring in a lot of money and, and rightfully so, because the government needs money to do a lot of the things they do for us to keep us safe and provide for as best they can. So when all of a sudden there's, you know, like, how do you get to, how do you look? So, when I, I used to work in Afghanistan, I was a spy and I would go village to village. You got to know that that part about this story first. When you live in a place that's largely lawless and tribal and feudal even, when you're the government tax collector, <laughs> you don't go out. You don't like you don't have a need to do anything. You know, like these com these countries that just don't have a tax base, countries that don't have a, a real tax base, because how do you defend it? You know, those those countries struggle to do things like create sidewalks and legitimate police forces and all those kind of things. And in the crypto world, it seems like they're, we're going to get past that a little bit because you could – Afghanistan could issue its own smart token that has value and a portion of that smart contract could be in terms of paying taxes. But governments are going to have to be in the crypto business, which is going to help legitimize what you and the folks over at – EOS or Ethereum are all doing because th this money is going to move through these pathways. Absolutely. I mean, we already see some of the states like Florida talking about taking Bitcoin as payment. And the reason is because people prefer, people prefer digital currencies over regular currencies. We're seeing the Federal Reserve, some of the Federal Reserve folks that have been involved with the Federal Reserve think that the, there should be a Fed coin. And that's because, you know, if the Believe it or not, the Federal Reserve note has got to compete with these cryptocurrencies now, yeah. and it's not going to be very competitive, let me tell you. 
I mean, yeah. it's got a long history and people trust it. But uh, if we get something that starts to get a long history and people trust it, it's going to beat the hell out of the Fed note. And that, and the Fed note is going to fade away. It's going to lose its power. Let me ask so, you this. What about, yeah. so I've been reading, um, I've been reading Jim DeFelice's book about the Pony Express. And it's, it's awesome. And it's not even out yet. He's going to be a guest on the show in two weeks. But uh, one of the things I keep talking about in the book are the panics from the 1800s. And we've gotten sort of past the panic. We call them recessions now. But like the whole run on a bank kind of thing. What prevents that in the crypto world? Like if someone says, oh, my God, there's going to be a, you know, and it's all panic based. It's all stampede, tech, you know, um, stampede behavior. But when someone says, oh, my God, everybody's got to sell bit shares right now. What what protects that currency from what really is a mirage, a panic? It's not a real problem. Well, that's a very good question. And, uh, you know, I I think that. Uh, liquidity is what protects it. And of course, what does that mean? That means that if people know that they can quickly change their money into something else, then they won't, believe it or not. Right. If I just that know that any second I can get my money out of something and put it in something else, then I don't have to worry about it. And so uh, as long as the there is liquidity, then people will will not uh, not have to worry about uh, doing runs on, on banks or anything. Of so, course, I don't. Go ahead. No, well, I was, I was going to uh, change gears, but go ahead and finish your thought. I was going to see, and also, of course, diversifying. Uh, with One of the problems with Bitcoin and uh, the cryptocurrencies is that you generally have this one account, and it's got this one public key, and everything's there. And if that public key gets ripped off, you're going to you know, lose all your money. Yeah. But if... But, but with some of the cloud coin, you can actually take it and put it in different places. Mm. So I could put it in your investment account and some of it could be on my, my USB drive and some of it could be my email account. And some of it could be over in some stock market somewhere. We, so we can really diversify it. And that ought to also reduce that type of problem. Does your coin, do you see it also being like some of these process coins where, where gas, like they call it gas audience, where to move coins down that ramp in the aisle of yap from platform to platform you need gravity in that case or or some inertia but there's a thing called gas in the crypto world and those coins are used to create these transactions do you see your coin either blending into those options or like neo gas has a thing like that or or do you guys replace that or i because i'm again the things i know i've only learned since like january so i'm just getting going but what are your thoughts on that well, you know, there's a lot of experiments going on, and some of the things that I thought were stupid a few years ago, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I want to, there's some of the pro, some projects I thought weren't going anywhere, and they've actually done quite well, and of course they might fail in uh, in a couple of years, who knows? So, really, it's it's lots of experimentation, and so if you're an investor, it's a great opportunity because there's so much opportunity for something just to skyrocket, but at the same rate, there's the opportunity for something just to fail, and it is really hard to tell what's going to work and what's not going to work. Yeah. Now, now I think that CloudCoin is, I've been asked, is CloudCoin uh, Turing complete? And mm -hmm. this is a term that we give to computer languages, actually. <laughs> and so Ethereum attempted to be a computer language that you could actually type it commands and you can control it. I think that logic uh, logic should not be with data and Ethereum is doing the wrong thing and it opens them up to hacking and money disappearing, all kinds of problems, and it shouldn't be that way. With CloudCoin, it's completely pure data and that allows it to go into any computer language, any system. And so I just can't imagine that there's something that you cannot do with CloudCoin. Right, right. And if there's already an existing coin, it sounds like CloudCoin can work in a symbiotic, not that they're bio things, but you know, in a, in a symbiotic like atmosphere, or like with EOS, where you're going to create efficiencies within the EOS model. Am I explaining that right? Absolutely. I mean, you might want to, you might really like some things that the EOS is doing. It's really cool. It's allowing you to accomplish some goal, but at some point you might want to say, okay, I want some privacy and I want 100% privacy. So you might just convert it. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, there, there would be a way within EOS that you could do that by just employing CloudCoin. So I could see 
lots of different uh, collaborations. As I'm looking right now on www.cloudcoin.digital slash buy, a place where you can buy cloud coins, it, the, the asking price right now is five cents per cloud coin. So, uh, and it's really simple to buy it. I, I'm actually preparing to do it right now because I am going to become a uh, cloud coin billionaire. But what does someone do when they're like, Pete, I heard you and Sean talk for almost an hour and I haven't got the first fucking clue what you guys are talking about. How does someone go to a practical remedial school? Someone who's, the, most of our audience is not 18 year olds. You know, there are some, and I love you guys. Um, by the way, shout out to Charlie Cook and his wife who bought a Break It Down show shirt for him. I love you guys. What What is someone like Charlie Cook, who lives in Canada, who's listening right now and assembling cars for us, what does he do to go, you know what, it sounds crazy, but if Pete thinks it's an interesting idea, I'm going to put a couple bucks behind it. How do they learn more? One thing that they can do is go to cloudservice.academy. Okay. And cloud, cloudservice.academy is a website in which you can buy some cloud coins, but it, there's a maximum amount, so you can't buy a whole bunch there. But uh, what it does is when you spend $11.43, you can get the book, Beyond Bitcoin, The Future of Digital Currency, which I think is very valuable. You're going to get the software that allows you to uh, pwn, which is password on cl cloud coins. We haven't really talked about that process. You also get to see the Cloud Coin University videos, and you also get some cloud coins that you can play with. And so it's a very inexpensive way to get a whole bunch of knowledge. The, the whole point of the education kit is to keep it cheap so that everybody can get into it and look at it. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you go to digitalfrontiernews.com. Mm -hmm. Digitalfrontiernews.com, they, they have a company that makes its money by buying and selling Cloud, uh, buying and selling uh, digital currency. And they've made quite a bit of money. And what they're going to want you to do is become an investor in them. Mm. But if you sign up for their newsletter, they will give you my book for free as well as five free cloud coins. And so you can get my book and five free cloud coins. And uh, the price you pay is now you're on their newsletter and you're going to receive uh, some good information on how to make money. But they're, they, you know, their, their job, I guess, is to make you money. That's what they do. And they make themselves money in the process. And uh, so if you want to be an investor and they give lectures every Thursday where they talk about it and they're really good. Okay. So sometimes people listen to this show while they work on their car or while they are doing the dishes or on a walk. So say that last, because that sounds incredible to get the book for free, to get a little coin to play with. Tell us that whole thing again so we can understand and go do it. Because I definitely, I'm telling you right now, it's the next thing I'm going to do once we hang up. Okay. So that's digitalfrontiernews.com. It's a long name. And, uh, I'm trying to think if I could, if there's a link to it that we have, digitalfrontiernews.com. I don't, I don't think there is. I'm going to Digital Frontier News right now. Okay, Digital Frontier News. That's the place, Digital Frontier News. Oh, and you can sign up for it. Five free cloud. Okay, that's right. That's let me, right. Let me just do this now. So, all right, I'm going to go right now to digitalfrontiernews.com. Okay, look, and there's the pop-up, DFN. Register below to get a free copy of Beyond Bitcoin and five free cloud coins. So, look, someone's going to give you, let's see, five cents is to go on. So, 25 cents worth of free cloud coin. You can become right. a cloud coin billionaire like me. <laughs> and also a free copy of the book and start your journey towards figuring this stuff out. And I'm telling you right now, because I'm not that far ahead of you guys in the audience, uh, this is the future of money. Yes, there'll be dollars. Yes, there'll be Aussie dollars and Kiwi dollars. And all those other things are still going to exist for quite some time. But if you take a reasonable amount of money and start to look at these things, you might find that it makes a lot more sense as you get in. You don't got to know all of it, but um, there's, there's a lot of potential here, and I, I'm excited. So I definitely am going to go to digitalfrontiernews.com and sign up. That is no lie. I will be doing that. And I want to make sure everybody can find Sean and be able to bug him with questions because he would love to be bugged by you guys. So... I'm going to tell you his Twitter handle is sure. 
at Cloudcoin Global. If you can't remember that, I'm going to send you the information. I'm at Pete A. Turner. I want you guys to do go on this Cloudcoin and crypto experience journey with me because it's just neat. And then to look back 10 years from now, I'd be like, I remember when crypto was a thing? That's the worst that happens. Or you go, wow, I can't believe that that guy Sean was on Pete's sh Break It Down show and he told us to buy some Cloudcoin and I did and now I've got all of these other benefits aside from the cash just the efficiency the safety the security all those things and there sean what have we not covered that you want to get into well you know one interesting aspect is does you know one, one question i had was does a currency create a civilization or does a civilization create currency because we've you know been associating with money with governments for long and Besides, you know, gold and silver, which is actually, you know, an international uh, uh, currency that was completely private. But other th these days, you know, the governments are running the money. And so yeah. is it possible that maybe a gover uh, a currency could create a civilization? And so we do have cloud, uh, the cloud people constitution. And that's at the back of my book. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's another interesting thing. Yeah, and then does does cloud currency create the ability for civilized and stable behavior? Because money isn't tied up in in singular entities. Uh, it's you have the ability to find other ways to translate value because your your location, your intelligence, your time, all these things have value. But you know, the most you can do is trade your time for cash. So now we're saying there's other ways to do this. So does that create less panic, less uh, need and starvation for for resources? And it's interesting yeah, to you think know, about the, that. One thing we didn't talk about is Cloudcoin is actually the first currency that has a fixed supply. And so we made it, we're spending it into existence. And the only way that we can make more of it is to actually split it. So we can actually double everybody's money or triple everybody's money, but there's no mining in the, it's not created that way. And so it's a totally different paradigm. It's going to be very interesting to see if a perfect money will create a much more perfect economy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so let me ask you this and, and then we're going to let you go. Uh, you did this great service for everybody. Obviously you're, you're going to make some money yourself, but how, how do you make money with this then? Is it, is if, if it's not mined and you know, you have to do something to create more of it. What, how do you, how does one monetize this? So we have hundreds of people in our consortium and maybe some of your listeners would like to be in the consortium as well. And if you can add value to cloud coin and make it worth more, then you can get paid cloud coins. And so we actually just pay it out and I get paid as well. So I get paid for my work and so do uh, about 10 different programmers and wow. 20 different system administrators and all these quality assurance people and wow. now some other people. So uh, we, instead of doing an ICO, we're just spending it into existence. Good. Well, you can spend some on me. Let's figure out how I can help you guys out. And all right. Very good. <laughs> I love it. So he's Sean Worthington. He is fantastic and he's helping change the world. And we're going to get Stan on too, by the way, you mentioned Stan Larimer and it's all been about schedules. He's on a plane, I'm in traffic, but we're going to put together our, our minds and try to figure out how to help one another. Cause I want to be part of this, uh, this crypto world and, and, and use it to look, do I want to make money? Of course. But what's the point of making money if people are miserable all around you? I want to try to help folks with it. So, um, absolutely. When you add value to people's lives that you should be rich. You know? Right, right, right. And if I'm adding value, I should be receiving value back, not just in terms of smiles, but maybe some cloud coin. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. At cloud coin global on Twitter. You guys got to do that. You have to, I'm telling you, get involved in the, uh, in the crypto world. You're going to thank yourself. And then also digital frontier news.com. You can get a copy of the book and five free cloud coins. And you will join me when I do that. Cause I've already done it. And Sean, will you come on again and continue to guide us and teach us about what's going on? Because it's fascinating. Absolutely. I'd love to. 